On the 4th of May, Vasa sailed home on her own keel, completing her one and only fateful voyage. The first visitor was King Gustav Adolf VI, making the royal visit which her builder, Gustavus Adolphus II, had never made. Below decks, the archaeologists begin a new voyage of discovery. Amidst the tons of ooze and slime, Per Lundström and his colleagues began to uncover over 14,000 objects, all in an amazing state of preservation. And lying as he fell, trapped beneath a heavy cable, a member of the crew, his feet still shod. The thick mud and the intense cold proved to be the ideal medium for preserving all manner of organic materials. The Vasa was the first spectacular demonstration of the full potential of underwater archaeology, possibly because its results could be seen in air. To do this underwater in 1960 would have been impossible and unnecessary. The gun decks, however, were largely devoid of guns, a salutary reminder of the skill of 17th century divers who had left mainly the carriages for their 20th century counterparts. The greatest challenge and the greatest triumph was the preservation of the ship itself. Undaunted, they set about the process of conservation of the entire structure as it stood. No one had ever before attempted such a monumental task and on such a vast scale. It was a task that might take over 20 years, and it did. Today, Vasa still floats in the museum that was created to house her at the time of lifting. But the ship is magnificently changed. Visitors come from the world over to see what 30 years ago was unimaginable. A complete 17th century warship brought back to life after 300 years underwater. What was never imagined was the extent to which this warship was a temple to the state. The Vasa is adorned with the largest collection of non-religious wood carving to survive from that age. It was designed to set an awesome example to all who saw her. In these carvings, the power of the Vasa is still effective. <laughs> 